There's no doubt that overworking a team, particularly over time, has an absolutely corrosive effect. Uh, we actually have a specialist in this area, Dr. Nita Shattuck at the Naval Postgraduate School, who has pointed out in very clear terms uh, the need for getting a, a sufficient sleep. Uh, the surface forces uh, just recently mandated now that they do their at-sea rotations consistent with these rest principles. Humans don't come with a lot of degrees of freedom. In other words, you have two eyes, they're both located in the front of your head. You are never gonna have an eye in the back of your head, right? You have two ears, one on either side. Your arms aren't gonna grow, you know, 10 more inches. You have what you have. Early on in my tenure here, I had the great good fortune of having um, students in my classes that were SWOs. Uh, surface warfare officers. They had these watch bills that they were standing, these schedules that they were working, and they told me these stories that I thought were great exaggerations, must be great exaggerations, about how little sleep they got. So that was an early human systems integration uh, <coughs> challenge that we identified. HSI is about trying to take the capabilities and limitations of the humans and align them with the affordances and constraints of the technological systems. So you've got humans with capabilities and limitations, you've got technological systems with affordances and constraints. And unless those things align with each other, the system isn't going to operate well. And the way we like to look at it at NPS is a combination of factors such as manpower, personnel, training, human factors, engineering, and safety, habitability, occupational health, and making sure that our practitioners understand that there are trade-offs uh, within those domains to achieve total system performance. We started doing data collections on ships in about the 2011 time frame and we've been slowly developing our body of knowledge which suggests that crew fatigue, crew awareness, crew mental state are heavily dependent upon uh, being in sync with the circadian rhythms that, that govern our bodies and, and the Shattucks have definitely been at the forefront of that research. We have a number of watch bills and we've looked at sailors who are working a given watch bill and we collected data on their performance. So we can see, oh, when they're on this watch bill, we can predict how slow they'll be or how fast they're going to be. It gives us a way to make recommendations to commands to say, this doesn't seem to be working very well. The Surface Forces journey on this kind of started in 2013 when Surf Force sent out a message which encouraged ships to experiment with circadian principles and pointed ships towards the NPS website to get materials and to provide feedback. So that kind of opened up a line of dialogue between the fleet and the study team here that has just been bearing fruit ever since. In order to address objectively performance of the sailors, when they were performing their duties, we asked them to uh, perform the PVT, the psychomotor vigilance task. The PVT actually gives us measures of reaction time, so speed, so the quicker you are, you think about someone who is monitoring a screen, they're trying to look for incoming enemies. So when you, you think about this, you want them to respond as quickly as possible, but you want them to respond accurately. As we've collected more data, as the conclusions have become more pronounced in terms of the advantages of circadian watch bills, Surf 4 felt confident moving out here recently and just saying, you know, we're just going to do this. And a guidance was provided via uh, record message traffic to uh, implement circadian watch bills. Surf 4 headquarters is planning a series of waterfront seminars to help inform our shipboard leadership on the policy and the science behind that policy, and I think uh, both Professor Shattuck and her team, as well as myself, are going to be involved in that process. There's nothing worse than developing a system without considering the, uh, the role of the human operator until it's too late, because the costs that are associated with going back far exceeds the cost it would take to address those concerns early on.